Hey, Miller, thanks for the time. Uh, today marks one year. I talked to Nick and DJ about this of uh, Tua going down and getting hurt against Mississippi State. What does it mean to you to see him come back in the story and now 3 0 with the Dolphins? Have you been watching, or what does it mean? as a former teammate of yours to see I mean, that. that's, that's so awesome. Anytime it's with, um, especially with one of our guys, to see him persevere through an injury. Um, it, it hits home close to me. Um, especially we've seen guys like Sean Dion, that happened too, and now where he is. And now you got two or three with the Dolphins, playing really good football. It, it, uh, it says a lot about the type of guys that, that come out of this place, um, that they persevere and continue to work, and I'm so happy for them. Charlie Potter, you're up. Hey, Miller, just sticking with that quarterback trend, what have you seen from Mac this year and what he's been able to accomplish? Does that surprise you at all? Uh, it doesn't surprise me. I know it surprises a lot of people, um, especially on the outside. I don't want to just all call all you guys out, but uh, I know a lot of people didn't see that from Mac Jones. And we have over the past two or three years, uh, the way he's worked and prepared and turned himself into one of the premier football, I mean, players in the country. Um, so I'm proud of him. He's got to keep working, and I'm excited to see what else he can do. Chase Goodbread, go ahead. Miller, I had a question for you about what you saw from Trevor Lawrence his freshman year in high school. Was there a particular throw or play that you saw him make that struck you wide-eyed, like, you know, just kind of hit you, wow, what kind of talent this guy has? Um, yeah, we were throwing um, bang eights, which is like a, a quick post his freshman year and they pulled out a radar gun and they clocked him throwing the ball like 55 miles an hour and I just kind of like turned around to the head coach and I was like that was <laughs> that was not normal um just little stuff like that here and there he would do it would always catch your eye and be like that was just not I can't do that <laughs> so stuff like that Edwin Stanton with the next question hey Miller uh how difficult and upsetting was it to uh you know you're prepping for LSU and all of a sudden the, the game gets canceled and now you got to turn around and prepare for Kentucky. Was that difficult or uh, what's that process like? Um, I think it's always hard when you when you go into a week preparing for one opponent, especially such a big game every year, LSU. Um, I think everyone's really looking forward to that. But because of this year, how crazy it is, um, we have to be ready to kind of shift gears and get ready for another good Kentucky team. Um, so it, I think it says a lot about our staff and our coaches and the players have done such a really good job of being able to go 180 in their mindset and get prepared for an entirely different team, um, another good team in Kentucky. So we're looking forward to that. Over to Tony Sakalas. Miller, as somebody that catches passes yourself, how, how would you evaluate Najee Harris's receiving and just what he brings to a receiving game? And then also, how does that kind of help open up things for, for you as well to do your job? <laughs> um, I mean, I think it always helps when you have guys like, like Mechie and I've had Waddle and, uh, and Smitty outside catching balls. I hope they just double everybody and nobody covers me. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my perfect world. Nobody covers me. They double team everybody else. But uh, Najee, he's great. He's great running the ball. And obviously, as you guys have seen, he's great catching the ball um, out of the backfield. And it's been a big help for our offense to kind of open up, a, open up an offense. And Najee catching the ball is, is really big. Um, so hopefully, we'll see that more in the next couple weeks. But he's very, very talented, as you guys have seen. Michael Costagrande, go ahead. Hey, Mel, just wondered, uh, looking back a few years, what do you remember about Mac Jones when he came in as a freshman? What kind of player was he? What was he like in the locker room? What kind of memories do you have of him, you know, four years ago? Um, I remember him being really skinny, skinnier than I was, and that says something, because I was skinny. Um, I just remember being small and undersized, but a, a very hard competitor, even on the scout field. Um, I, he was always yelling at himself, I remember, because he wanted to be so good. He held himself to such a high standard. Um, that's something that really sticks with me and I think has led to his development. Um, being such the player he is now is because he holds such a high standard up for himself. Um, so not only in the way that he plays, but in the way that he leads. Um, that's who you're hearing the respect of a lot of guys early from that. Mike Rodak, over to you. Yeah, Miller, you touched on it a minute ago as far as having to take a 180, um, you know, in the schedule potentially changing. And the way that it's set up now with the SEC, they can change opponents on you up until Monday night of each week. Just how does that affect you on, on Sundays and Mondays, potentially having to, to watch different teams or prepare for different teams other than the one that's, that's on the schedule that week? Yeah, obviously that makes game planning uh, pretty difficult. But if we kind of go with, I know it's cliche to always say, like Coach Saban says, but we're, we're going to be 1-0 and every week and we're going to play ourselves. So if we play to the best of our ability, it shouldn't matter who we're playing. Um, so yes, we have to game plan and get ready for this defense and this defense, and it brings new challenges every week. But if we focus on what we need to do, 
uh, continue to get better at our craft each week. The tight ends get better at theirs, the O-line get better at theirs, the D-line better at theirs. Then at the end of the day, it shouldn't matter who we play. We should be able to line up on Saturday and play whoever. Um, that's the goal, at least. We're going to go over to Cecil next. Miller, hi. This is Cecil Hart at the Tuscaloosa News. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. Um, I respect your privacy. If you don't want to answer this, that's fine. But um, per social media, your during this off period, your relationship status changed, and I just wondered if uh, that was part of the time off, or if that was uh, how that worked out for you. No, we had we had our bye weekend, and I got to uh, go home and propose. So. That was a, it was a good win on a bye weekend. So, great day. <laughs> Congratulations to you and Abby. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Cecil. Tyler Waltrip, you're up. Gosh, I hate to uh, change it and be kind of negative after that question, but uh, I just wanted to follow up on something that Coach Saban mentioned in his press conference. Uh, he said mentally it feels like week 11 to him still. Um, more like it would in a normal season. I'm just curious, does it feel that way for you? Does it does it mentally feel like, you know, the seed, the regular season should be wrapping up? And and if so, how do you maybe handle that the rest of the year? Yeah, I think everyone's mental clock, especially if we played here for the past couple of years, you know where we would be at uh, this time of the season. We had a, an elongated, a weird camp, and obviously a weird summer. But I think it's just one of those things you have to adjust to. This year is unlike any we've had, any the coaches have had, or anywhere else. So I guess it's kind of just how who can adapt to it the best. Um, but no, our older guys like myself will look back like, wait a minute, this is not where we would be uh, regularly. But it's just another challenge. And whoever can adapt to that challenge the best will succeed this year. So yeah. We have time just for a few more. James Ogletree, go ahead. Yeah, Miller, kind of along the same lines with Mac. And you mentioned you know, how he earned, earned all the guys' respect with the way he set that standard for himself. What else were the people outside of the program who maybe doubted him or, or wondered what he could become? What were they missing uh, about him? What, what didn't they get to see? And what kind of improvements have you seen from him on the field as a passer over that time that you've spent with him? Um, well, something to the, to the outside voices, I guess we'll say, is that Matt came in as a little white kid, three-star recruit from Jacksonville. And so automatically, you get put off. Um, and he came here, not a big name, and everyone just assumed he would get uh, rolled over in the list of big names. And Bryce Young's done a fantastic job. I'm proud of the way he's developed and continued to grow and will be a great player. Um, but Mac Jones is an elite passer and has continued to grow in, his, in his, the way he prepares and has transformed himself um, into a very, very good player. So I just don't think, you don't see a lot of the intangibles from the outside, and then you also don't see how a guy's going to develop. Um, that those are things that are kind of hard to tell. So, we're going to finish up with Stephen Smith. Miller, you have blocked for a lot of running backs in your time here at Alabama, but a young guy here in Jace McClellan, what have you seen from him as a freshman that has you thinking this kid can be something special also? Yeah, I think Jace is a guy who's really uh, stepped up as of late. And uh, Like I said earlier, it's a year where uh, guys can go up and down, in and out of um, not only with injuries, but also with COVID now. So it's a time where younger guys have gotten a lot more reps. I think Jace has done a great job stepping into that role. Uh, he runs really, really hard. That's the first thing that jumps off when you watch Jace play. He runs hard. Uh, and he does a great job finishing even in, in practice. And that's going to pay off in games when he uh, starts to get more and more carries. So that guy's really started to develop and, and proud of the way he practices and plays. So. Thank you, Miller. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Have a good rest of your afternoon. Hey, DJ, when you watch Jace McClellan at practice, the, the true freshman, how does he stand out to you at running back, his ability to move and cut and create plays? Uh, how has the freshman looked at to you at running back, Jace McClellan? He's looked good since day one. Like he's, like he's been doing it, like been here for a while. He looks just like the old guys, and they've been doing a good job of coaching him up. Ryan Hennessy, over to you. Yeah, I talked to Nick about this as well. Um, this was a year ago today when Tua got hurt against Mississippi State. What does it mean to you as a former teammate of his to see him have success one year ago uh, in the NFL now? I'm, I'm so proud of him. He came a long way. His, his story, his journey has been amazing. Like, 
I remember that I got hurt. The, I think I got hurt the same game, and just like seeing him go down like that, and seeing where you're at now, like how you bounce back is incredible. Kirk McNair, over to you. DJ Coach uh, Saban was just talking to us about how you uh, have to look ahead to what's actually in front of you, not what you should have been. And, but I wonder if the LSU uh, postponement last week was disappointing to you as a player, to the team, and, and uh, then having to practice without that game and going forward, how that's been. No, so I don't, it wasn't disappointing. I mean, of course we wanted to play them, but. We prepared, the, even like when we found out we weren't playing them, we prepared as if we were playing them the whole week. But like, we wanted to play them, but it wasn't disappointing. Edwin Stanton, you're up. Hey, DJ, could you talk a little bit about uh, just having the two weeks off for, uh, for this, or, you know, the last two weeks? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? How do you view having two consecutive weeks off? It could be a bad thing, but how, what coach was preaching to us was, staying in a habit. So what we did was prepare this week as if we were planning game. We practiced yesterday, you know, so it wasn't really, it was different. It could have been a bad thing, but I feel like we prepared the right way. Michael Casagrande, you're up. Yeah, I was gonna ask something about that. It just, it, it, so it wasn't, it wasn't a huge challenge. So it, the mental side of having to sit out for two weeks. I mean, have you ever had to do that before in the middle of the season, have to sit out? No, nah, I never had to done that before. It was, it was different and, but I feel like we handled it very well, so no, nah, it wasn't that hard. Tyler Waldrop, over to you. Hey, uh, Coach Saban, when he was up there, he talked about, um, you know, mentally he feels like it's still week 11, even though, you know, <laughs> y'all played only about half the games at this point that you normally would have. Uh, I'm just curious, what does it feel like mentally for you? Do, does it kind of feel like? This sh we should be wrapping up the season right now, and, and it, what are some challenges to that, and, and how do you maybe handle that? Um, I don't, it was, it does feel kind of weird, but in it like mentally it feels like week eleven. But Coach Saban's been doing a good job of keep reassuring us about the season and just saying being like being where our feet are and controlling what we can control. Mike Rodak, you're up. Yeah, DJ, there's a chance that down the stretch here, a couple games get moved around or changed uh, with some of the SEC's new rules. Just how does that affect what you're doing early in the week in terms of getting ready for opponents, potentially having to get ready for multiple opponents? It really doesn't affect us at all. We go, we just go week by week, and whoever the opponent is, we're going to prepare just for them that week. And if it changes, it changes, but we just we can't control that, and we can't think about the future. We just have to focus on what's right there in front of us. William Galloway, you're up. Hey, DJ, DJ, can you tell me about Kentucky's offense? And Coach talked about a uh, dynamic quarterback that can pass and run. How do you approach that? And how does the defensive line specifically focus on stopping the quarterback this week? Um, for one, up front, we have to do a good job of striking the blockers and defending the run and trying to make them one dimensional. But so, because if we can't do that, it's going to be a long game. So we just have to control the line of scrimmage and try to make them one dimensional. We'll go back over to Stephen Smith for the last question. DJ, that was a really cool video of Trey Sanders in the locker room, players cheering, jumping around, happy to have them back, and just guys having a dance party. Just talk about the chemistry of this team. What makes this team so fun to be around? We've been, we came a long way. We had a lot of uncertainty with like the, um, the summer and not knowing if we're going to have a season or not, we've just been around each other and everybody just kind of bonded and clicked in. So, yeah, it just makes it fun. But it's a, it's a real fun group and I enjoy being around all the guys. And it's like the video is like that all the time in the locker room. Almost every day after practice, before practice, it's like that all the time. Thank you, DJ. We'll be bringing up Miller Forstall here in a moment.